In this video, I want to talk about continuations in F sharp and continuations have to do with how we can pass functions to other functions. So we've seen the concept of this in the past that we can pass functions as parameters to other functions, but with continuations, it's a bit more specific. It has to do with how we can modularize the application of some functionality within a function in case we execute a particular branch of the code. Now that's quite abstract, but we're going to see in an example now how that actually works. So for that, I'm going to uh, provide a divide function. It's going to take two input arguments. Firstly, it's going to take a numerator, which is going to be of type double. There we go. And a denominator that is also of type double like this. Now, the basic implementation of this would be to just return the numerator over the denominator like that. But this doesn't handle a case where the denominator is zero for which we need some special functionality. And that's where this kind of architecture or st style of writing code uh, actually comes in. So what I want to do now is I want to define, you know, an if else statement regardless or depending on if my denominator is zero and depending on that result, I would then do some execution. But rather than hard coding that particular execution or functionality in this function, I could use that as an input parameter to begin with. So I would, you know, just to go ahead and show you what I mean, if denominator is zero, then what I could do is, let's say, um, I could fail. So fail with, and then I could write here, cannot divide by zero. And otherwise, else, we'll just take the code that we had before and execute that. So this is an improvement, but maybe you don't want to necessarily throw an error here. Maybe you want the caller of the function to determine whether or not you should fail in case the denominator is zero. There might be applications where you just want to print, like it cannot divide by zero. But as this function is written right now, it doesn't allow for that kind of flexibility. And that is really where continuations come in. So continuations are a way of writing functions that provide some functionality, but then tell you what to do depending on which kind of um, well, part of the code actually gets executed in the end or which branch of the code gets executed. So in order to build that, what you would do concretely is you would have something like if fail as a function, right? And what I can do down here is rather than having all this fail with stuff, I could take a unit type and I could send that to fail with. I mean, I need to, to pipe that uh, real quick. So let me just copy a pipe over because my keyboard <laughs> is not very collaborative when it comes to those. Uh, nevertheless, we would pipe a unit type to if fail, which would then be a function that we defined on our side. So what I would do here is I would take this functionality and I would create a new function if fail. And this would be of unit type. And the implementation of this would be just the thing that we had before, right? So I could do this. Um, actually, let's not call it if fail let's call it uh, failure, something um, just to make it more clear that we can use different ones here. So you have this if fail function. And similarly to that, you could also define a if succeed function. So we can take this output as opposed to just returning the output itself. We could also pipe this to if success, right? So this would additionally be a function that I provide as a parameter. Okay, so this is a continuation kind of programming style. And this if success, I would need to define some functionality for that. So I could say let, I could call this print success. And that would then take one input argument um, result. And the implementation of that would just be that I print this thing. So I would have here print fn and then this thing. So resulted in, and then here I would do A and then result, right? So let me just call this. We can see that it works. I'm going to say um, let A equals divide. And here I provide number one, number two. If fail, um, well, let me send fail the, the failure function. We're not gonna actually use that now, but nevertheless, and then 
if we success or if we, if we succeed, then let me send the print success function, right? So if I execute all this, what you're going to see is because we provide good numbers, one and two, it's going to succeed. It says here resulted in 0 0.5. That's what we get if we would divide one by two. So everything works fine. What is then the point of doing this? The point is if we wanted to now provide a different kind of behavior in case we fail, that's something we can do very easily. And it's something the caller can actually do themselves. It's not something that's hard coded in this function, but you can reuse this function very flexibly and just provide different kinds of operations here, depending on if you succeed or if you fail. So if we, for the sake of this example, send in a zero here, what you're going to find is we're going to crash because currently we use a, a fail with, as you can see here, we cannot divide by zero. So we cause the program to fail whenever this occurs, but that's not necessarily what we would want to do in all cases, right? We could similarly want to have an application where we say, rather than failing, I want to actually print my failure. So I don't want to crash the code, but I would just like to print the fact that I failed. This again needs to be of unit type because we're not going to send it an actual result. So I need to modify this slightly, but I can just say here, cannot divide by zero like that. Okay. So if I now run this instead, but rather than providing my original failure function, I would provide my print fail function like that. What you're going to see is our code no longer crashes. We get a message saying you cannot divide by zero, but the code doesn't crash. So this is a programming style. It's not revolutionary. I'm sure you've seen sort of applications to this in the past, but this continuation style is useful for building in particular computational expressions because they revolve around this concept. But you can also write code in general with, with this kind of style. So there's something called continuation passing style or CPS that relies on this principle and you can write your entire code base based on this if you want. So that's just a quick overview of how you can make some of your functions a bit more flexible and tailor your code base in a way that doesn't necessarily allow you to or force you to hard code a lot of functionality a priori.